How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, and as you can tell, I am not down in sunny Key West, but I'm back up in Long Island, New York, and it's snowing. Um, it's actually not that bad out, but I think I'm just spoiled down in Key West, so it doesn't feel that bad. But uh, we're gonna go and see if we can catch some herring. Um, I just went by a fishing spot that I grew up fishing and kind of went there for nostalgic reasons and uh, actually ran into my cousin of all people and he was getting out he had his rods and everything and I said what are you guys going for and he said herring and I forgot that that's something you can do right now in the middle of December in the snow so we're gonna give it a shot and see what we come up with hopefully we get something not just freeze our butts off So I just got here, I'm gonna set up, give it a shot, see if I can catch some herring. My cousin's actually on the way with some hot coffee, so that'll be uh, a godsend. Not cold yet, but I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to make it out here. But I see a couple of little splashes right over there. We'll see what we come up with. Now, when I was a kid, we had International Day in school and of course everybody brought in like meatballs and spaghetti and frankfurters for German or whatever my mother as a young kid talks me into bringing in pickled herring well needless to say mine was the only one that wasn't eaten I was devastated but what we're gonna make today if we catch some herring is pickled herring just for my mother uh, one of her favorite things so Fingers crossed, the herring are here in this water and I'm out freezing my butt off for nothing. It's uh, pretty cold. <laughs> I'm starting to get real cold actually. Um, I just wanted to show you what, what I was using here. Um, it's what's called, I don't know if you can actually see that, but it's called a sabiki rig. And it's got all these little hooks all the way up the line. And then if the herring are here, they will see those hooks and bite into them. Now the problem that we're having is that everywhere is covered in ice. So we're getting hung up on the ice. I'll show you that here. So we got all these ice patches. We got all these ice patches that are making it very difficult to cast out into where we need to be to catch these herring. Um, so this might be a couple of days that I'm cracking away at this, trying to get this done because it doesn't look too promising today, but I'm also waiting for the uh, high tide to come in. So maybe, just maybe, in about an hour or so, um, we'll get something. My, uh, my cousin's already losing, losing faith. He's all the way over there. We decided to split up and uh, try to hit different spots of the, uh, of the bay here, but no bites yet. Okay, so no bites at the other spot, so we're changing up the venue. All I need is one school to pass by. One school, and with my sabiki rig, I'll get my six or seven that I need to bring home and pickle. We're gonna walk up along this bridge and go side to side on the bridge. The problem is that there's a ton of rocks over here which I know from fishing this bridge for the better half of my life, actually, when I was a kid. Um, so it's hard not to get caught up in the rocks. So this might be a very, very short-lived uh, mission right now. I don't see any life. So this spot's kind of interesting. It's pretty cool. Um, the, uh, the Long Island Sound is out that way. And what happens is that during a high tide, it comes in here and fills up the pond. So all the bait fish come into this pond, which is Mill Pond. Um, and that, today we're going for the bait fish, but other days, what's pretty cool is that 
when this empties out, all the big stripers and bluefish sit on that side waiting for the bait fish to come out of this side. And you can actually do some pretty good fishing over here. Well, I got caught up on the bottom, lost my rig. So we're gonna come back out tomorrow and spend the day tomorrow doing the same thing as today, running around trying to find these herring. And everyone's saying they hit them yesterday. It's always yesterday. But today was not the day. So I've been at this for about three days now, uh, chasing these little herring all over Long Island, the North Shore of Long Island, and I'm coming up short. Uh, I even busted out the lucky Wayne Gretzky hat, and it did nothing for me. Uh, I'm gonna keep going tonight, but what I did do was called a couple of friends that I had from back in the day that fish up here and asked them what they thought, and it's the age-old tale of should have been here yesterday. Fishing was great yesterday. So basically what I'm finding out is that uh, right before the storm hit, it was pretty thick up here with the herring and now they're all disappeared. But on a good note, one of the guys I called caught an abundance. And he has a bunch and he said that he could uh, spare a few for me. And he said, oh, you're using them for bait? And I said, no, I'm gonna be cooking them. His reaction <laughs> was probably the same as the kids in school who, uh, had saw the pickled herring that I brought in. But uh, so after he turned his nose up and made a couple of uh, guttural sounds, he said, okay, come on by and I'll uh, toss you a couple of herrings. So if at the end of tonight, I still come up with nothing, then we'll head over, I'll admit defeat and we'll go pick some up and then uh, get to cooking. back to Key West. This is crazy. And the fact that I'm not the only one out here, man, these guys are real deal. Now it is hard for me to admit defeat. It really is. You want to catch your own fish. But I always say, if you're not a good fisherman, you better know a good fisherman. Lucky for me, my buddy had a bunch. I got a bunch from him. Man, it is Old. My hands are shaking. I am in the car now trying to warm up and I'm watching the guys from the car to see if anyone pulls anything up over the side there. All right, we're back at the house and I'm gonna get to uh, filleting these fish. Now, one of the good parts is that when they come out of the water, they lose all their scales. So I don't have any scaling to do. Uh, I'm not going to gut them. All I'm going to do is take the fillets clean off with a nice sharp knife. And then I'm going to prep the fillets by putting them in a salt and sugar mixture. That's going to draw out all the moisture and actually get them ready for the pickling. Now herring are interesting because they have one big run and you kind of had a choice to catch an abundance of them and then you had to preserve them somehow. So your choices were to either smoke them uh, salt and sun cure them or pickle them. Now if we were pickling them and putting them in jars we could get years out of them but all we're doing is pickling them, letting them cure and then we're gonna eat them but just so you know by doing this process I'm adding about 14 maybe 20 days to their shelf life. In the larger ones, there are gonna be pin bones, so you wanna cut those out like I just did. And then you can go through and pull them out with your fingers. They're not too bad, and they come right out.
Okay, so to start our cure, I'm actually gonna do a layer of paper towel, then do a layer of our herring, and then cover it in this, which is equal parts salt and sugar. And the reason why I'm doing the paper towel is because I want the salt and sugar to draw all the moisture out of the herring and have somewhere to go so they're not just sitting in their own uh, liquid. This way the paper towel will draw it out and then we can wash them off and then I'll show you how to make our pickle brine. Now that these are sitting in the salt and sugar mixture, I'm gonna cover them up and these are gonna go into the fridge for about two, three hours. Now, while those are in the fridge curing, what I'm gonna to get together is my pickling. And with the pickling, I'm using fennel, white onion, sugar, black peppercorns, mustard seed, couple of clove, and then I'm gonna do my actual liquid. It's gonna be one part champagne vinegar, one part uh, distilled white vinegar and one part water. My brine has come up to a boil. I'm gonna shut that off. I don't want it to boil and cook anything down. I just want the heat to dissolve the sugar, release the oils in the uh, spices that we put in there, and just, just kind of release some of the water from the veg that we put in there. One of the important things that I'm gonna do right now for my brine is taste it and see if it needs any more sugar, any more spice, and you want it to be a little heavy on the vinegar because you're pickling things, so you want it to penetrate whatever you're pickling. I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar just to sweeten that up just a touch, but other than that, my water to vinegar ratio is spot on. It's perfect. You want it just above diluted. And uh, that's pretty tasty so far with the fennel, the onion, and the dill, and that little bit of mustard seed. This is gonna be really good. So now I'm gonna shut it off, throw it in the fridge, let it cool down completely to where it's a little bit cold. My fillets are done curing, so it's been two hours and I gave them a quick rinse with water just to get the excess salt and sugar off. But what it does, it firms them up a bit. So now they're not as soft, and I have my pickling liquid with the fennel and the onion. So what I'm gonna do is each filet, take just a couple of pieces of fennel and onion, start at this end, and then roll them up and put them in this container, which when I'm done and fill this up, we're gonna pour the pickling liquid over and let those sit for at least 24 hours. You can let them sit for up to 15 days, but just to get the right taste. And now, the other thing I wanna mention is that I didn't put any salt in my pickling liquid. And the reason why is because these are so heavily salted to cure them, it would be over salted if I added it to this liquid also. And the taste of this liquid, if you've ever had them, what we're aiming for is bread and butter pickles. That kind of taste, a little bit more sweet, a little bit less salty. Now, traditionally, you would add a bit of cream or sour cream to the pickling liquid for the pickled herring. That is a traditional dish, but we're going to keep ours very light and just vinegar based. Okay, I got my herring all rolled up. Nice, neat packages. So now I'm gonna pour the remainder of the pickling liquid on top of them, cover them, and throw them in the fridge for, I'm gonna say about two days I'm gonna let them ride for. Um, I'm probably gonna test them in 24 hours, but I want them 
to be fully cured, soak in all that flavor from the pickling juice, soak in the sweetness of that fennel, the spices from the mustard, just that little bit of clove. And then we're gonna put them on the plate and top them with just a little bit of fresh dill and orange zest. It's been 24 hours. If I can get this open here. There we go. That our herring has been pickling. Oh yeah. So you want the flesh of the meat to just be a little bit opaque and that means that it's taking on the pickle. So then on top of my pickled herring, I'm just gonna put the zest of a little bit of orange. I actually thought later as an afterthought, it would have been nice to peel a little bit of the orange peel off and put that in my pickling liquid, but this will still do the job. and a little bit of dill. And there we go. We have our pickled herring with fennel, onion, uh, peppercorns, dill, mustard seed, a little bit of clove, champagne vinegar, white vinegar, and it only took a week to make this all happen, so it's a really easy recipe. <sighs> all right, so. It is only fair that the woman that made me bring pickled herring to school when I was younger and caused the traumatic experience that caused this dish takes the first bite. Matt is <laughs> oh, really my mom. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom who has been behind the camera. So I am going to get her a fork and knife. And now we'll really, really put her to the test and see. Now I am her son, so she won't say anything bad. <laughs> but we'll see. Alright. Here it goes. <laughs> Bringing me back to my childhood, Will. Great job. <laughs> All right, that's it for this episode of Cooking with Clams. If you like the episode, hit like, hit subscribe. I'll keep more coming, and hopefully the next ones will be in sunny Key West and not wintry New York. See you on the next one.